Hey everyone, this is Dark Knight from Method Gaming. Welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Uh, this video is about the new fusion that just came out, and uh, we're going to take a look at the champion that can be fused. Uh, he's a legendary. And also talk about where we could possibly use him. Uh, is he good? Is Does he have hidden potential? You know, that sort of thing. These are just my thoughts, of course, so take it with a grain of salt. I mean, uh, everybody's account is different at a different level, so uh, while I think, uh, for example, that this might be a good champion to get, some of you might not be in that situation uh, where you could actually be going for uh, something more important, you know, uh, and something that will give an impact to your account uh, right away rather than uh, later, for example. So anyway, let's get right into it. The uh, first thing to note is that they actually now have this icon here showing that there's a fusion going on. And if you click on it, it's basically like a shortcut. It takes you straight to the fusion. And now, like they said in the last, I think it was the last patch notes, uh, the limited time fusion events are now at the top of the list which is good, so it's uh, kind of easier to both see it, that there's something, oops, sorry, that there's something going on uh, here when you see this uh, champion uh, uh, portrait. And also when you click on it, you don't have to uh, default to Reddit Keeper anymore and just look for something down here. It'll take you straight to the limited time fusion. So let's take a look at this guy and see what he's got to offer. Now, if you haven't seen this guy before in his kit in particular, uh, you might be a little surprised by uh, what's going on, but I think he's got potential. And I'll explain uh, why and in what situations uh, in just a little bit. So let's take a look at his kit in case you haven't seen it yet. Uh, so the A1 is attacks one enemy two times, places 50% continuous heal buff for one turn on all allies under poison debuffs. So far so good. Then he has got Dreadic Boon. Uh, his A2 removes all debuffs from an ally, then heals them by 30% of their max HP and places a shield buff on the target equal to 20% of their max HP for two turns. So to, one thing to note first is that this is based on uh, the max HP of the target, not of this guy, so uh, basically putting a lot of health on him wouldn't really help that much with uh, with the heals. That being said, though, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If, uh, if he's healing somebody that's got more health, uh, that could actually be a stronger heal. Uh, this is on a three-turn cooldown. Uh, this is going to be important a little later and it can be booked down to two turns, so that's another thing. Then his A3 Cloud of Spores uh, basically places three 5% poison debuffs on all allies for three turns. These debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked, so he's basically poisoning his own team. Also has an 80% chance of placing block buffs debuff on all enemies for two turns, and this can be booked up to 100% chance, and cooldown is four turns, it can be taken down to three. This is also important a little later. And finally, he's got his passive uh, symbiotes, which is all allies under poison debuffs inflict 7.5% 7, 7 more damage for each poison debuff on them, stacking up to a maximum of 30%. This damage increase applies to all of their skills. Now, it doesn't specify whether this poison debuff needs to be 5% or 2.5, so my guess would be both. And uh, this is, again, going to come into play a little later when I start talking about where we could use this guy. So I think this is actually a good thing. Now, he places three debuffs on his A3, which means that he uh, has room, or actually your allies have room for one more poison to hit that maximum of 30% uh, damage. Also, just to finish out this uh, passive, uh, increases each ally's resistance by 15 for each poison debuff on them. So we'll be looking at some decent resistance, so about 45, uh, just based on his A3. And finally, he's got an aura, increases, increases sorry, ally resist in all battles by 50. All right, so a very weird kit to be sure. He's going to be poisoning your allies, slowly killing them basically, and uh, the thing is when he places this poison debuff, that those are three stacks, so that's 50% health, 
uh, for every turn that your uh, allies take. Uh, and it's for three turns, whereas his basic places continuous seal of 15%, which kind of negates basically the poison. However, it's just for one turn. So technically in the long run, he'll actually be killing your team slowly. So I think he can be used uh, in dungeons for teams which are uh, basically fast teams, where it doesn't take too long to... Uh, to you know to get to the boss uh, or to kill the boss depending on which dungeon you're running uh, this 30% um, uh, sorry the, the passive this 30% um, damage increase could actually be pretty great for champions such as for example cold heart or royal guard you know the, the ones that do massive massive damage also seer would be a good uh, good example and anybody else really i mean any nuker that you're using to clear trash waves or or bosses would uh, actually see or should at least see a huge improvement in uh in damage so i think this is the potential here now the first thing that I, when i see a, a new character uh especially an interesting one like this one the first thing i think about is how about clan boss how useful would he be in clan boss and I think there's actually potential for him, especially in a counterattack team, because with the counterattack team, for every three turns that the um, uh, what's it called, the clan boss uh, takes, he will be uh, doing two extra basic attacks or A ones. So that means that he'll be doing, he'll be placing two more, two more 15% continuous heal buffs on allies. Uh, under poison debuffs and that means of course that he might actually go uh, go around or turn around from killing your team slowly to actually healing your team by a little bit uh, i'm not sure if this is going to make up for the three turn poison debuffs that he's going to put uh, put up on your uh, guys but it might actually be uh, helpful in that regard and i think that this uh, this here would actually be useful uh, to to keep your guys alive and to bring some burst healing when needed but again this is just just speculation on my part i don't really know if this is going to be the case uh it's i'm not going to know un unless i try it so what am i thinking let's take a look at uh, my clan boss team real quick i don't have any keys unfortunately but you can see my team right here so this is the, uh, the one we've got jareg We've got Doom Priest, who's my cleanser. She cleanses on uh, her passive. Every turn she takes, she cleanses one debuff. So she cleanses the, the poisons from the uh, void, um, the void clan boss. She cleanses the stuns and so on. Uh, I got Razin, I got, you know, everybody else. But basically what I was thinking is, what if I get, uh, what if I replace uh, Doom Priest with this new guy and I actually forgot his name already just go back what was his name uh, Gerptuk Gerptuk Mossbeard if I'm pronouncing this correctly so Gerpy here uh, is I think a very suitable and interesting replacement for Doom Priest or for a cleanser uh, of course I'm just giving you a uh, an example with my team but i think a cleanser could be replaced because he's got that cleanse on his a2 and what i'm thinking is if you get his books right you might get him on a, a do, to do his things in a particular order on a three turn uh rotation so how would that work let's go back to this guy and take a look at his skills so this is already on three on a three turn cooldown so we could potentially make it so that he only uses this and this is only off cooldown whenever the clan boss stuns and when the clan boss stuns usually there are no other debuffs around so i think it's pretty maybe not guaranteed but it's going to be pretty obvious that uh gerpy here is going to use this druidic boon uh this uh he cleanse and heal on the guy who took the stun so if we have him at a speed where he takes his turn after the stun but before everybody else which is what usually uh doom priest does in my team then he will basically be able to 
cleanse that stun and take it off of whoever took it. Now, of course, there's a caveat. If he himself gets stunned, he will not be able to do that. Uh, and then his uh, cleanse will go, uh, basically, he will go uh, off the rotation. So this is, a, this is a legitimate threat. So if you're building a team with this guy, you're going to have to think of a way to make him tanky and make sure that he's not taking too much damage uh, so that he can always have as much or more HP than everybody else. And that way he doesn't take the stun. Also, we have to take into account the fact that if uh, he is the weak affinity for the clan boss, he'll probably be taking the stun all the time. But anyway, uh, this is one thing. However, take a look at this cooldown here. So this can go from three turns to two turns. So I think this is actually not going to be beneficial if you're looking to use this guy for the clan boss because that will break his rotation. He'll be using the cleanse on other turns and not on the right turn. So uh, I think this, if you're looking to build this guy for clan boss, I think this is something that you should try to avoid. That, however, is easier said than done because, as you know, when you use books, they go randomly across all skills. So they could go here, here, or even here. And the thing is, if, for example, you only wanted to take this from four turns to three turns and there was only one book that you needed, you have a pretty good chance of actually landing that book before you land all books here, unless you're really unlucky. However, we've got five books here and four books here, so there's actually a pretty decent chance that you might get the cooldown here first before you even get that second cooldown. So uh, in my first scenario where you manage to keep this at uh, three turns, uh, if you manage to get this down to three turns as well, uh, you'll be looking at a pretty good three turn rotation for every three turns of the clan boss. So basically you'll be doing uh, the three poison stacks right before the first AOE, then you have counter attack. Everybody's going to do extra damage because of the poisons. And then when you get to the stun and somebody gets stunned, you will want to do, you want him to do this move here. And that will work out nicely because uh, uh, both these A2 and A3 are going to be on three turn cooldowns. So they will be off cooldown exactly when they're supposed to. However, if something happens and this goes on a two turn cooldown before this skill goes on a three turn cooldown, so basically your books go the wrong way, then uh, I guess there's also a potential to uh, unbreak this just by giving him more speed to make sure that he's taking four turns to the clan boss's uh, three. That would mean that you don't actually, you're not actually going to want uh, this to be down to three turns. If this skill is two turns cooldown, you'll want to keep this at four. And what you will want to do is take that those four turns and basically just uh, do this skill right before the AOE and then hope that this skill will be uh, off cooldown for cleansing the stun. So he should be able to use this skill twice and still be able to cleanse the stun uh, for the three turns that the clan boss takes. Now, this is just theoretic. I honestly don't know if this is going to work out uh, as I think it will in practice. So again, take my idea with a grain of salt. Uh, so yeah, I think this, this is how you can make uh, this guy work in a clan boss team. And again, as I said, I think he will be more beneficial in a counterattack team simply because he will have more chances of doing his A1, and that means more uh, continuous heal stacks for one turn on your guys. Uh, of course, I, th I really think that you will still need um, lifesteal on everybody, just because I don't think this will be enough to keep everybody alive, uh, far from it. So lifesteal or maybe leech would be a good option to, to go for if you're doing this theme with uh, Gerpy here. So uh, that's that's what I that's basically my idea for this guy. This could be a potentially a really good addition to a clan boss team because um, if we if we're doing this run on a of course on a void clan boss, usually the void clan boss will place a poison on one of his AOEs. I think it was the first one, if I'm not mistaken. So what happens is this 
gives you four stacks of poison. So uh, Gurpy does the three turn, uh, three stacks, three turn poisons on your team, and then your uh, clan boss does the uh, lesser poison for uh, one stack of each for your team. So that gives you the uh, full potential of 30 percent extra damage. Now uh, I'm not actually I don't remember if this poison from the clan boss is resistible because you'll be looking at a, a lot of resistance uh, from the passive of Gurpy. So you might actually get all four stacks. You might still keep three stacks, ju just three stacks. But that's again 22.5 extra damage, which uh, could be huge. It could potentially uh, make the or give basically give you a difference between having uh, two keys and one key. Uh, Nightmare team, for example, and I don't mean double damage, of course. I mean, for example, on Nightmare, I usually do about 30 million. Uh, I could potentially uh, do 40 with, uh, with this buff. And if I uh, redo the gear on my team to make sure they're doing, uh, they have, you know, 100% crit chance, uh, more crit damage and so on, I think this extra damage from Gurpy is actually going to be able to push them to a pretty comfortable one key nightmare. And then I could be looking at three key ultra nightmare, which would be uh, the perfect situation for me, basically. So uh, this is why I think this guy could be really, really interesting. And this is why I'm going to go for this fusion. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is that this guy could potentially be really good for your dragon team. Uh, you might actually need a healer for that, though, because uh, you, the dragon is going to put uh, poisons on your team. This guy is going to put poisons on your team. Uh, but if you're if you're using a team which doesn't quite one-shot the dragon, but could potentially benefit greatly from uh, from the extra damage that uh, Gurpy provides, well, then you could be looking at a really decent time for your dragon runs. Uh, I think this also has potential in the other dungeons. Uh, maybe even in Spider. I think it's Spider. This could actually be really good with the poisons because, uh, again, this combined with uh, champions such as uh, Coldheart, such as Royal Guard, you know, Seer, uh, those champions that do uh, max HP based damage, this could actually be huge. This 22.5% uh, or 30% extra damage could be huge and it could really uh, make or break your team, I think. Or not make, your, make or break, but rather uh, what I wanted to say is it could really improve your, your times on the dungeons. So I believe that this guy under the right circumstances and with the right team could have some really good use and could be uh, potentially game changing for an account. But, you know, it's up to you. I wouldn't I wouldn't say go for this fusion 100 percent and I wouldn't say don't go for it. I mean, I'm just hopefully I gave you a, a decent idea of how you could potentially use this guy in the clan boss. And, uh, of course, I think he will also be fairly useful for speedruns as well. Uh, whatever speedruns you're trying to, to uh, make possible, he can give you that extra, he can let you reach that extra mile and uh, just uh, make sure that you're downing, let's say, uh, the enemy in, uh, in a single shot instead of two shots and so on. So, how about the fusion itself? Let's take a look at the news here and see what we're looking at. So what, what do we need? We need Fang Cleric, Catacomb Counselor, Seneschal, and Ombro Enchantress. Uh, basically, the great thing now is that when you click on the fusion, you can see what you already have uh, right here. So even if they're in your vault, if I click on, for example, this guy, I can see that he's in the vault. Uh, he's at level 30, 3 star, so I'm going to need to work on him. But then, whenever I click, I can see everybody, basically. Now, this guy I don't have, the Myrmidon, I'm going to have to farm out from the, I think it was Ice Golem, or maybe Fire Knight, I don't remember. So I'm going to have to farm this guy out so I can uh, fuse the Counselor. But everybody else I pretty much already have. And you can see that I have two copies of Banshee. One is my uh, clan boss Banshee, and this one is just an extra, which I was saving for exactly a fusion. So lucky, lucky shot there. 
uh, and I think there was another copy. There we go. So I have two copies of uh, Bulwark. This one I was using for Clan Boss uh, some time ago, and this one is, uh, is a fresh one, level 30. So there we go. I also have a Fang Cleric uh, at 40 already, so I could potentially just uh, get him some chickens and uh, make him a 50 and just start working on him and his um, uh, ascension. But actually, I do like this guy for um, Faction Wars, because he's got a revive. And I'm thinking that, since I already have everybody here, uh, I'm thinking that I would just use the rares, build them up, and make a second copy. And then just use one copy for this fusion, and then keep another one for myself uh, to build them up in the future. So this could be potentially something that you could do as well. If you have an extra copy, uh, you could do that. Or potentially, you could also get two copies of him by doing this fusion. So by using the rares to make one copy of him. And also by doing one of the events, you could straight up get a copy without actually fusing him uh, from there, there as well. So you have the potential during this fusion to actually get him twice. So if we take a look at the champion training event, he can be pulled if you get about 20,000 points. So this is something that could uh, be a goal for you. Get one from here and then build up the other one from the rares. So that's one thing. Now, if you're not worried about this guy, if you just don't think you're going to build him or you don't want to worry about having him for uh, faction wars, then you don't really need more than one copy to be honest. Um, okay, so what else do we have? We've got... We've got the Seneschal. I was actually really wondering if I want to try and uh, make two copies, one to fuse and one to keep, but I don't think he is that good. So I am thinking of saving my resources and just, because I already have all these guys, I'm just going to work on them uh, to fuse him once and then use him to fuse the legendary. Uh, so I don't think I'll be doing a second one for this guy. Umbro is actually really interesting. Um, she's a uh, She's an arena champ, I think, and also she could have some decent potential in faction wars and dungeons, particularly because her skill, uh, her A3, let me just pull her up real quick. Was she Dark Elf? Um, bro, where are you? No. Okay, so I'm kind of not really remembering where she was. There she is. So she's Demon Spawn. Completely forgot. Uh, so there's Umbro. Uh, she's got a 1 damage increases, HP decreases. She's got a 2 attacks all enemies, block buffs, 80% chance for 3 turns, which is significant by the way. And also attacks all enemies, 80% chance can be booked to 100, uh, placing a provoke for 2 turns. So that's actually really good. 2 turn provoke is solid. She places uh, an unkillable buff on herself for two turns as well, which is again solid. And a block cooldown skills on herself as well for five turns. So you might be thinking, okay, this is the, the deal breaker. She is only going to be able to use her A1 for five turns. However, if you're doing if you're doing waves, uh, this should, I think, this block cooldown skills should go away if you enter a new wave. So basically, you could potentially do her A2 then her A3, and then uh, basically rely on her A1 until you clear the wave, then this block cooldown skills will go away, and you will potentially have the chance of going with the uh, A2, and then again the A3, and this will be a really, really interesting uh, uh, rotation, basically. I think she can actually do fairly well uh, in waves as well. So I kind of want to keep a copy of her. So what I'm going to do is, since I already have, I think I have all uh, all the rares that I'll need to fuse her, I'm actually going to uh, 
uh, farm those from the events, the upcoming events, to make sure I've used her twice. So I can keep one copy for myself and uh, build up one copy for the fusion. So that's something that you can do as well. If, uh, if you like any of these uh, champions and you have the opportunity to build up two of them, uh, that's an easy way of making sure that you get the champion that you want. Now, honestly, these two, uh, especially the Senish, I don't think he's great. This guy could potentially be good because he's got an ally attack. So he's basically like a poor man's Lanicus. But, uh, you know, I can't really make two copies of him because I don't have Myrmidon. So I'm only going to get one copy from... Uh, from the events and uh, for me that's a, that's a no-go on two copies so and I'm fine with that I really don't think I'll be building him anytime soon but that's something to think about is what I'm saying all right and so fan cleric Seneschal Umbro and like I said Catacomb Counselor he cannot be farmed anywhere else so you could get the Seneschal from Dungeon Divers event you could get fan cleric from champion training actually completely forgot about those uh, so uh, and also summon rush uh this is this starts tomorrow so basically this this is probably a high level high investment though and summon rush uh, is for uh, dark elves by the way specific dark elves uh nothing too exciting so i don't think i'll be spending too many of my shards on the summon rush to to get umbro directly from the summon rush so this whole thing that i've been talking about using the rares this is just to minimize the amount of uh, resources that you're going to spend for this fusion because if you're free to play or a low spender uh, and you're just starting completely fresh you don't have any of these rares any of these epics it's going to be i think almost impossible to do this uh, free to play or low spender if you haven't somehow uh, saved up some resources one way or another so what do i mean by that you could have potentially could have a lot of brews saved up saved up that will uh, basically alleviate the pressure of having to use um, crystals to to do refreshes and run dungeons in order to level up your champs you could just use brews that's one option uh, also you might have just a, a batch of uh, gems saved up for this particular uh, thing for uh, just waiting for the next fusion uh, in that case go for it use them up if you're not don't generally save them for anything else but fusions this is a good investment also uh, you should be looking to utilize your rewards efficiently for example right now i could be spending gems to refresh my energy and uh, build up my chickens However, because I see that tomorrow there's a Dungeon Divers event starting, I don't want to spend too much uh, energy and too much refresh, too many refreshes uh, before I get this Dungeon Divers event rolling. Because I want to be working on both the Champion Training event and the Dun Dungeon Divers event for, uh, at the same time. So I want my resources to go uh, for double the reward, so to speak. So this is something that I'll be waiting for. Uh, like I said, the Summon Rush, you can get the Umbro here uh, without actually fusing her, but I'm guessing that it's going to be very costly to, to get her. So uh, I would probably just go for it, fusing her two times using the rares and not, not really uh, farming her out through the event itself. So my advice, finally, uh, I'm going to finish up here real quick. Uh, apologies for the long video, but my advice finally is just go through the requirements Take a look at what you already have. Take a look at what you don't have. Look at the events, see when they start, when they finish. Uh, try to make a plan, basically. Plan out your progression, plan out what you're going to do. Uh, make sure that you're farming potion dungeons if you don't have potions saved up with your spare energy, if you have any spare. Probably not, but it is what it is. Uh, so make sure you're doing that as well as everything else and all in all if you think that you're going to need a lot of resources in order to make duplicates of these uh, epics even though you might want them you could consider just not using those resources and just going with one copy of each just to make the fusion 
just to create uh, diffuse GERPY. And, you know, anything else is just gravy, it's just extra. Something that might help you for future infusions or something that might help you, you know, further down the road, but I don't think it's anything that should be too, uh, too important for you. Okay, so uh, I think this is it for this fusion. I'm going to definitely go for it, but this time I want to do it slowly. Uh, last time I pretty much uh, blew my resources on getting uh, the Skull Lord, uh, which was unnecessary. So uh, this time I'm going to go slow and steady. I have a, a decent plan formed up in my mind. Uh, so I think, uh, I think I'll be taking my time with this one. Okay, guys, let me know down below if you think this fusion is worth it or if you're going to go for it. Uh, and uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, if you found this information useful. Uh, make sure to subscribe for future content. And until the next time, guys, stay safe and I will see you on the next video.